away. We are more than our body parts, our sex organs, our hormones. We are our beliefs, habits. We are what we say, how we act, how we talk. Our cultures, beliefs and ways cannot be separated from our identity. Society has seemed to always function by defining differences, hence our gender stereotypes. To be a man is to be strong, tough, hard-skinned, competitive, independent, non-emotional, aggressive, experienced, self-confident, sexually aggressive, and rebellious. On the other hand, to be a woman is to be dependent, emotional, passive. To be a woman is to be graceful, weak, flirty and nurturing. Unlike a drop of water, which loses its identity when it joins the ocean, man does not lose his being in the society in which he lives. Man's life is independent. He is born not for the development of the society alone, but for the development of himself. Identity can be considered a means to preserving the continuity of the self, linking the past and the present. For we aren't one thing, we are not stable beings. We are mixed, a mixture of things. We are our color. We are our race. And we are our culture. Our identities are continuous, ever-changing, never stagnant, never fixed. We are not stable, we are not a fixed being. We are unique, diverse, and we continue to expand. Our society can survive is for each of you to claim your rightful place. Today you will take a test that will help you discover who you truly are. The future belongs to those who know where they belong. This was supposed to tell me what to do. We're supposed to trust the test. I don't want to be just one thing. I want to be brave and selfless and intelligent and honest and kind. We cannot be put into a box, for self-identity is inextricably bound up with the identity of the surroundings. A personality alters itself through a series of self-referential experiences. We are not the same as the day before. Never. Much as a person can never set foot in exactly the same river on any given day, we are different each day. Yesterday made us, but the past cannot contain nor restrain us. We can never mentally scroll backward and be who we used to be. We must move forward in the stream of life until the day that our life force dries up and we return to dust. The experiences that we have, the people that we meet, the things we go through shape who we are. So, it cannot be said that a human being is a stable being. In as much as society tries to give us slots and places to put us in, we can't remain there, for we expand and change. The woman has always had to fight for her rights, for the right to be human, the right to To vote,
and the right for equal treatment. But the woman of color, the black woman, has always had to fight harder. For her fight has always been different. She has had to fight gender inequality and racism. She has had to fight from the space of not just being a woman, but also being a woman of color, which seemed somehow to be a sin. The white woman has put herself in the position of a spokesperson for the woman of color. She has positioned herself to teach the woman of color how to speak, dress, look, how to be a proper female. If you're going to do it, you really ought to do it properly. The portrayal of the white female body in the media, as in the case of Lady Gaga, is always portrayed as something wholesome, something good, something to be desired. No matter how uncontrollable a white woman gets to be in the media, she still embodies this white femininity, what it means to be female. Her body is still controllable, still conformed, it still maintains its wholesomeness. It's still intact. There is nothing wild about it. There is almost something pure about it. Something others, other women should look up to. She always has the right body. She always has the right controlled movement. She is the perfect definition of femininity. Whereas, the woman of color, the black woman, no matter how successful she is, in the case of Beyonce, she's always portrayed as something wild, something primitive, body parts all jiggling. An Amazon, she's portrayed as a body to be controlled, a body from the wild. No matter how hard she tries to conform, no matter how hard she tries to shape herself to, into the mold of the white woman, the model that she is supposed to be, she is never able to attain it. And for her, no matter the success she achieves in life, because she is not white, she can't be seen as successful. She tries to fit in, but she can't fit in for she is not white, she can't be white. And if she's too black, then she's just too black to be a woman. So where does she go from here? I tried to change. Closed my mouth more. Tried to be soft, prettier, less awake. Fasted for 60 days, wore white, abstained from mirrors, abstained from sex, slowly did not speak another word. In that time, my hair, I grew past my ankles. I slept on a mat on a floor. I swallowed a sword. I levitated, went to the basement, confessed my sins and was baptized in a river got on my knees and said amen and said I mean. I whipped my own back and asked for dominion at your feet. I threw myself into a volcano. I drank the blood and drank the wine. I sat alone and begged and bent at the waist for God. I crossed myself and thought I saw the devil. I grew thick in skin on my feet. I bathed in bleach and plugged my menses with paint. The color black has become problematized to the extent that the black female fears even her reproductive organs for whatever she gives birth to is stained with darkness, with blackness. And blackness seems to be synonymous to bad. She has become a political issue to be bounded about. Well, children, where there is so much racket, there must be something out of kilter. I think that twixt the Negroes of the South 
and the women at the north all talking about rights, the white man will be in a fix pretty soon. <laughs> but what's all this here talking about? That man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages, lifted over ditches, and to have the best place everywhere. Huh. Nobody ever helps me into carriages, or over mud puddles, or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and gathered into barns, and no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and eat as much as a man when I could get it and bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? I have borne 13 children and seen most all sold off to slavery. And when I cried out with my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me, and ain't I a woman? A devaluation of black womanhood occurred as a result of the sexual exploitation of black women during slavery. And that has not altered in the course of 100 years. Hence, a lot of identi identity has been imposed upon the black woman. That is why. Hence, the stereotyping of black women. Identity has been imposed on the black woman for her to carry out, for her to perform as if she was not a self, as if she's not a being. Hence, the stereotypes. Eight years and no phone call, nobody stands up, Foxy Cleopatra. He gave me a C minus. Oh, well, he gave me a C, which drives down my entire average. You, you gotta be stopping. You, you, you go, you go. All the myths and stereotypes used to characterize black womanhood have their roots in negative anti-woman mythology. Yet, they form the basis of most critical inquiry into the nature of black female experience. Hence, the black woman finds herself in a precarious position. Where does she go from here? She has a past and she has a present. Her past cannot be separated from who she is now. In the past, and even up till now, she has been told that she is inferior to the white female. So how does she gain her confidence back? How does she become self when she is inextricably linked to her past, her past of chains, her past of oppression? Even if she wasn't the one that was oppressed, her mothers, her ancestors were oppressed and somehow it has been encoded into her very DNA. What does she do? She can't go back to the past for she's no longer a slave. How does she move forward? How? How? Ain't I a woman? 
Ain't I a woman when the moon is full? When my mother rolls my naps in her poems, my father shouts Harambe seven times on New Year's Day. And I've been writing this poem for three years straight. Ain't Sojourner Truth been doing the same. Ain't Bell Hooks, ain't Intazaki Sean Gay. Ain't this a story that never makes the news? The vacant space that fills the airwaves, the silence of unwritten eulogies. Ain't this Liberia? Ain't this Haiti? Ain't this North Philly? Yeah, North Didn't a white girl closed mouth smile at me today? Tell me I'm beautiful, then hack apart my body. Wear my lips, ass, and hair like a costume. Didn't she sell all 13 of my children and lynch my husband? Didn't she ask me to be quiet one too many times? Didn't I bruise a black man's ego swole today? Ask him to stop calling my scars sacrifices, calling my suffering an inconvenience, a blemish on the black man's movement, as if MLK didn't suck milk from a black woman's tip. But ain't I a bitch? Ain't I bitter? Ain't I divisive by accident? Don't I complicate the revolution with all my grievances? Ain't I still grieving? Ain't this my middle finger? Ain't I finally done apologizing? I am not an obstacle to navigate through. I'm the reason you are breathing. The feet that trod out the path, even the light that subverted all your darkness. Am I not the pulse of every one of your revolts? Ain't I a woman? Ain't I a woman? Ain't this a rhetorical question? It's a new dawn, it's a new era. We were slaves, but we are free. We do not want to be victims, no. We do not see our, ourselves as victims. But as the white woman tries to include us in all that she does, for political reasons, just to be seen as inclusive, she ends up excluding us, for in itself, Inclusion has become exclusion for we have been othered. We have become the othered and we have been put in a space where we have to act out the other. Now, a narrative is a story, not a logic, nor ethics, nor philosophy. It is a dream you keep having, whether you realize it or not. Just as surely as you breathe, you go on ceaselessly dreaming your story. And in these stories, you wear two faces. You are simultaneously subject and object. You are a whole and you are a part. You are real and you are shadow. Storyteller and at the same time character. It is through such multi-layering of roles in our stories that we heal the loneliness of being an isolated individual in the world. What is my story? What is my narrative? This is it. I am my mother's daughter from the wilds of Africa. I was taken. I was a princess. I became a slave. A princess adored by my father. A treasure, a gem to my people. But then I became a slave. I'm free now. But how do I become a princess again? How do I gain back my confidence? I was a woman full of confidence, a woman full of courage, a woman who knew her what, a woman who was secure in her place in the world. But now, what do I do? Where do I go from here? I don't want to be your charity. I've fought with a man and I've had to fight with you to be equal too. I have tried to fit into your mold but I can't for we are different. Yet you do not recognize that. For you can only sympathize, not empathize. How do I become woman again? How do I become me?